Sid. Um, differentiation and unknowns. That's our, our main focus, unknowns. And what we talk about in unknowns is that there is an unknown constants and typically it'll be like A, B, or K, um, you know, in terms of the letters that are used to signify them. So they are constants. They might be five, they might be three halves, they might be 22. Like we don't know what the number is, but there is a number. So when we took, the, if we were to take the derivative, it would be treated as a constant. Um, and as such, it should be noted that for every unknown, we need a relationship between X and Y. So typically that relationship is the implicit function itself. Um, sometimes though the implicit function isn't even given and the relationship is actually the derivative but the derivative, you got to realize that the derivative is a relationship between x, y, and the derivative. So there's usually some information about the derivative we know, as we will see. Before we get into that, though, before we get into that, let's do a little bit more practice, review practice of, of what we did um, yesterday. And so, for example, here's another implicit function, x squared plus 4y squared minus 4x plus 16y equals negative four. So this is an implicit function under a relationship between um, X and Y uh, that is not explicitly solved for either. And dy dx equals X minus two all over negative four Y minus eight. So if we solved for the derivative using implicit differentiation, this is what we would get. Now, as you've seen in your homework, and it's I did this for multiple reasons, both as practice and uh, as well as how the AP exam um, layout typically is for this type of problem. Um, we'll ask you to, we'll give you this, and the first question is typically to show that, um, you know, that that is what the, the derivative is. So prove that, show, so you have to do the work. And in other words, that just like I tell you, it's not the answer that's really of any importance because I'm giving you the answer, but you have to show the work and why that is true. So do get that practice. But the question here that I'm going to be asking is find the coordinates or coordinates for horizontal tangents, okay? So this is a very similar one, and this one should actually be feel a little bit, hopefully maybe a little easier to do, um, but it requires also some extra stuff. So when we do this type of problem, what do I do first? So what am I going to do? This is where you jump in, this is where you chime in now. x minus 2 equals 0. Yeah, so I'm going to set the numerator of the derivative equal to 0. So x minus, which is x minus 2, equal to 0. And that gives me x equals 2. Yeah. All right. What do I do next? Plug it into the original equation so you can find your y. Very good. So 2 squared plus 4y squared minus 4 times 2 plus 16y equals negative 4. That gives me 4 minus 8. So that gives me a negative 4 plus y squared plus 16y equals negative 4. The negative 4s cancel each other out, giving me y squared. And now I want you to note that really this is all algebra, right? So the relationship, this, this is technically calculus. Calculus informed me that x minus 2 equals 0, but everything afterwards is just algebra. Um, 16y equals 0. How do I solve that? You factor. Factor out a y. Good. So y plus 16 equals 0 gives me y equals 0. And y equals negative 16. So my answer, our answers are... Y 
Perfect. And those are my answers. So, like I said, this is review, which is based based on what we did yesterday. And I can do the same thing. Find the coordinates for vertical tangent. Now, I'm not going to finish this problem but because I, I want to focus more on what we have to cover. But in this case, we set the denominator equal to 0. So in this problem, it would just do minus 4y minus 8 equals 0, which gives me y equals negative 2. And then I would... You know, once again, plug into x squared plus 4 negative 2 squared minus 4x plus 16 times negative 2 equals negative 4. I would do some algebra, and it turns out I get y, I get x equals 6 and x equals negative 2. So 6 comma negative 2, negative 2, negative 2. I don't want to show all the work because the process is exactly the same as my previous example. Um, you just need to know where to start. What do I set? What information is given to me in the problem? Oh, the information is vertical tangent. So I, the information comes from the concepts of calculus, that vertical tangents happen when the, de de the denominator of an implicit differentiation derivative equals zero, whereas a horizontal tangent, it was the numerator equal to zero. The next one though is a little bit different. And I want to work talk about this one. So the next one says find the coordinates or coordinates when the slope is equal to one half. So, this is very similar to the previous ones. Everything here, on when they talk about slope, when they talk about tangents, all of that information is always about the derivative. So it's giving me a relationship between the derivative of a relationship of the derivative is what it gives me. So, what do I do on this problem? What do you think I've done? I haven't, I didn't give you a problem like this yesterday, but overall the concept is much the same. And in from the previous day on Wednesday, we learned how to do a problem just like this. So is f prime x equal? We don't have f prime x. I don't know. I don't know what f prime x is. Is that the baby? There's no babies. Nowhere in this problem is there any F primes, and actually nowhere in this problem is there babies. So in regards to this problem, or in regards to the concepts of utilizing the letters that are used in here, what do I do? Are we going to use the dy dx? Yeah, we're going to use the dy dx. Perfect. What, how are we going to use it? Equals one half. Equals one half. Boom. dy dx equals one half. All right. And we know we've been given dy dx. So that's that's the calculus. That's really all the calculus is. That's, that's, that's calculus right there. Everything after this is algebra. The only calculus part is knowing that when I read this, and it's just interpretation of reading and reading the language. When you read this, you got to think dy dx equals one half. That's the calculus. There's no other calculus you have to do in this problem. The only calculus in this in whole problem that we're about to do right here is noting that dy dx equals one half. Reading that statement, slope equals one half, and knowing it means dy dx equals one half. So everything else is algebra, so x minus 2 over 4y minus 8 equals 1 half. It's an ugly 1 half. And now I need to find a relationship between x and y. 
So, you know, you can do the easiest way to do that is cross multiply. That gives me um, 2x minus 4 equals, mm, it should be a negative 4y minus 8. Is it? Yeah, negative 4y equals negative 4y minus 8. The easiest one to do is solve for x. Because if I solve for x, I get something nice and clean. Whereas I solve for y, I'm going to get an ugly fraction. So 2x equals negative 4y minus 4 divided by 2 gives me x equals negative 2y minus 2. And then I take that and I slap it into my derivative for when I, or I saw that x squared plus 4y squared minus 4x plus 16y equals negative 4, which gives me negative 2y minus 2 quantity squared plus 4y squared minus 4 times negative 2y minus 2 plus 16y equals negative 4. I'm going to do all this work. I'm going to, it's going to give me some y value, and then I take that y value and I plug it back in so that it can tell me the x values. It's algebra. It's solving that. Now, I, I'm not going to go about solving this algebraic problem. Um, I, I actually can't even recall if it actually gives me one, but the purpose of me showing this problem is just to kind of see how it is because you're going to have one of your first homework problems does the same thing. Um, but this is a problem where instead of telling you that there's a horizontal tangent, numerator equals zero, vertical tangent, denominator equals zero, I'm just actually, it's, it should be even easier. It's explicitly telling you that the derivative equals one half. And you go through the entire process. Sometimes when you, when you set and solve that equations, sometimes you get x equals a number, y equals a number, like on the first two. Or you get something like yesterday where you have to get a relationship of x equals to y or y equal to x. And then you plug it back into the original the relationship between x and y. And then solve it just using algebra. Question. That was kind of what I wanted to cover and finish covering yesterday. Yeah. So let's get into the new stuff. So we're going to talk about finding the unknowns. So in, in, in regards to this, it, and it could be any letter, um, we'll say like A and B. And typically there's going to be two variables. So since there's, and I mentioned this, and there, there's two unknowns. So that means I need two relationships, okay? So typically, the first relationship is the implicit function itself and a point. The second one is the derivative And, um, and a point with slope. Um, and it, it, sometimes this might have multiple times. All right. So you need to know a point. So the problem will give you a coordinate. So in the other problems, we were trying to find the coordinate. And these problems you're typically given the coordinate. So you're told when x and y happens, or here's what x and y are. When x and y are these values, then something happens with the derivative. And if something happens with the derivative, then it is also implied that that point is also a point for the implicit function. So let me show you one um where hold on one yeah so let's do an example so in this example 
ax squared b minus by squared equals 2x. Find a and b, which are constants, such that there is a horizontal tangent at the coordinate 1 comma negative 2. Now the hardest part about this problem, calculus wise, there's two things you got to do calculus wise. Okay, The first thing calculus wise is you need to know that what does horizontal tangent mean. Okay. The second thing that we need to know is how to take a derivative. Now, these derivatives can throw people off because you see this a and b, but you just got to treat those because they're constant. So you just do the normal rule, and sometimes that can be a little bit tricky. So the first thing I like to do is I first like to find my equations. So before I do any other calculus, I can do my algebra first. So what is the algebraic relationship that I know is true? What do I do to find the first one? What do I know about 1, negative 2? One comma negative two is what? A what? Nobody? Is a point. <laughs> on the implicit function. In other words, I'm going to use the ax squared b minus by squared equals 2x, and I'm going to plug in this coordinate. And that gives me a times 1 squared b minus b times negative 2 quantity squared equals 2 times 1, which gives me a times b minus 4b equals 2. This is my first relationship. That is my first equation. I call that equation 1. Now I have a relationship of a and b. And this is just advanced algebra, people. This is just advanced algebra. I didn't do anything that is calculus based so far in this green. It is all algebra. Hey, 1, negative 2 is a point, so I plug in x equals 1, y equals negative 2. Everywhere I see an x and y into the relationship between x and y, which many call an equation. I like to call relationships. And I clean it up. Um, I can probably, I, I probably would like to clean this up and maybe solve for, um, for, for b. But we'll just leave that there. We'll see how it goes. What do I have to do next? What is the other relationship that I know? What is the other piece of information from this problem that they tell me? You need to find a horizontal tangent. Okay. Well, I don't need to find the horizontal tangent. They told me where it's at but it's very similar to what you're saying. What do they tell me? What the information do they give me? What does that tell me? Because they told me there's a horizontal tangent at one negative two. A and B are constants? Well, yeah. I got well, yeah. I mean, I gotta find A and B. That's the whole question. There's a horizontal tangent at one negative two. So, what is the mathematical relationship? Is what I'm asking. The mathematical relationship is that dy/dx equals 
0 at 1, negative 2. Or if you use the other notation, dy dx evaluated at 1, negative 2 is equal to 0. This is the other mathematical relationship that they have given me. They have to give me two mathematical relationships between x and y, such that when you plug in x and y, so when you're finding unknowns, you have to have some type of mathematical relationship that does not involve x and y, and that happens by plugging in a coordinate. And it always happens the same way. There's no difference in terms of these problems to problems. Now, what that means is I need to find dy dx. Now, this derivative looks very hard. It's not. It's actually very it's actually very easy it looks hard seems complicated but the derivative is not what is dy dx sorry that is that is I don't want to write that's that's improper notation how do I find a derivative let me differentiate okay so I want to I want to differentiate so if I differentiate the implicit function what do I get? A and B are constants when I differentiate. What do I get? Wait, so do we find like the der derivative? Mm-hmm. So is it going to be like 2AX? 2A... X. Times, times one times, times b so uh, it, it might be easier to think of this as a times b parentheses x squared minus b y squared equals 2x a b is a number a is a constant b is a constant so a times b is also a constant so that's why i said this front part seems very difficult it looks very hard but you just get 2ab times x because a b is a constant that's the hardest part i think in the whole problem minus so one one y or or y b no no sorry sorry it's negative two b y negative minus two b y equal no nope. Minus two x. No. Equals two. No. Zero. No. Oh. Times dy dx. Times dy dx. It's a derivative. Yeah, it's a derivative. If you don't, if now hopefully, I, I've done it before. Where I do that and I say equals two and I, I I do this and I and I have it like this. And I say, oh, equals two. And then I look at that and I, I take a look and I go, whoa, it's automatically wrong. I know something's wrong. I know I've done it wrong because I'm trying to find dy dx and there's no dy dx. So I go, oh, okay. Oh yeah, so times dy dx, it's the chain rule part of the application. All right, what do I do now? You can move to two a yeah, a2x, b to the other side, to the right. You could. You could. But nothing in this problem says that you need to do that. You do not need to solve for dy dx. I know I can now plug in. I know x is 1. I know y is negative 2. And I know what? I know that when y, I know x equals 1, y equals negative 2, and I know, it's written right there. dy dx is 0. dy dx equals 0. And I'm just going to substitute these. So you can solve for dy dx, but then you're going to say dy dx equals 0, and then you're going to plug in the numbers. You're going to do a lot more work than you really need to do. It's the same idea when we don't really need to find dy dx. We just need to find the slope. 
So 2AB times 1 minus 2B times negative 2 times 0 equals 2. They told me that at this point, dy dx is 0. So the relationship is that if I look at that relationship, there's three numbers. There's three letters. There's three, um, there's three variables, x, y, and dy dx. Those are variables. They change. A and B, constants. This gives me 2AB equals 2, which gives me that AB equals 1. And that is my second equation. And now it's a system of equation I need to solve. Now I solve for A and B. Now I find A and B. How do I do that? So let me let me rewrite the other equation. Equation one was a b minus four b equals two. All right, so that's a it's a weird it's a weird system of equation, but it actually turns out to be one of the easiest system of equation problems if you've practiced and know how to do these types of problems and you don't overthink it. So, how do I solve for a and b? I have now two relationships. Of A and B. I have two relationships between A and B. I can find A and B. That's the rule. You can refer to them as equation one and equation two. So, B equals 1? No. And I don't want the answer. I care less about the answer, and I care more about the process and steps we have to take during our notes. But B is not 1. That would mean A is 1. And that is not true here. How do I solve the system of equations? That's what I'm asking. You got two options for solving system of equations. Technically, there's three options of solving a system of equations. What are the three methods of solving a system of equation that you have learned in your algebra teachings? Can we just plug in? Well, first off, let's answer the question. What is, what are the three methods? Because I don't, you're saying plug in, and I, you're not, I want you to refer to the method. So what are the three? Elimination, substitution, and um, oh, three emission, substitution. We're not going to utilize the next, the next one. This one would cannot be used on this problem. Um, just because of the restrictions I'm, I'm placing on the problem. And I, had, I, I guess I didn't use it. But the other one is graphing. You graph them and you find the intersection. So that's like we could graph them using Desmos. I know Farida was saying like in terms of her, I, you know, tutoring was you know, like, it, you, so you don't have, you can just use a calculator. Um, in these type of problems, if the calculator is allowed, you can. And it's also very weird in terms of finding the values. So... so the answer, so you can't use graphing. So the methods here are either substitution or elimination. It turns out that in this problem, both of them are, you're able to use both of them. You can use either substitution method or the elimination method, but I would find that most students would not feel comfortable using the elimination method. And so, most students, and this is where Ariana was trying to say, the substitution method. Am I correct, Ariana? Yeah. 
Yeah, so you call it plug-in, which most of you refer to as plug-in, but it's a substitution method. So what do you mean by plug-in? What do you mean by using the substitution method? Well, we already have the equation AB minus 4B equals 2. We know what AB is, which is 1. So we can do 1 minus 4B equals 2. And then we can just solve for B, minusing 1 on both sides. We get negative 4B equals 2. 1 divided by negative 4, and b equals negative 1 4. Good. And then what do I do? Um, and since we know what b is, we can do, uh, define for a, right? Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, I guess we can do the... Which one should we do? Should we do the 2AB equals 2 or AB equals 1? Yeah, use the AB equals 1. Typically, when you're using the substitution method, whatever you plug into, whatever you substitute, you should refer back to. So I try to draw a little flow chart here um, for you so that you can kind of see what we do. And so AB equals 1. So A times negative 1 over 4 equals 1. And you can basically see what A equals. A is equal to? Negative four. Negative four. And those are my answers. So when A equals negative four and B equals negative one fourth, there is a horizontal tangent at those values. So let's let's take a look at that. So when those values. So let me let me let's pull up some Desmos here. I have my, it says when A equals negative 4, so I'm going to get negative 4 X squared times B is negative 1 over 4. Minus um, B is negative 1 over 4, so let me actually change that to a plus. one over four times y squared equals two x and so it's a circle this is actually a graph of a circle or of, of an oval so you can see that this is the shape that i get this implicit function when you relate x squareds and y squares these are called um um conic sections. Um, I don't believe anybody studied in their math three class um, conic sections. Usually it's a topic that ends up getting kind of uh, skipped over. It's a very cool concept and idea in problems, but typically it's, it's if it, there's one thing that you need to cut from the math three pre-calculus curriculum, typically it's conic sections. And this is a conic section problem such that the relationship is a um, uh, an oval and if I were to trace, if I were to search the coordinate, neg one comma negative two, I'm right there at that point down there, which turns out there's a horizontal tangent. So when A and B were those specific values, it's true that I get those, I get that right there. Now, if A and B are any other values, there would not be a horizontal tangent at one comma negative two. There would be a horizontal tangent somewhere else. And that's what we did. So hopefully that visual there helps you out. Let's do another example to finish our day. So in this problem, I'm not gonna give you the original implicit function. In this problem, dy dx is equal to ax minus b 
over 2y minus ax plus b. And that's the only relationship I'm giving you in the regards to, I'm not going to give you the, the, the function. Find a and b given that there is a vertical tangent at 1, negative 5 and a horizontal tangent at 5, 1. Now, how many unknowns are there? Two. Two. So how many relationships do I need between those two unknowns? Two. Two. All right. Let's find them. What do I do? Uh, when you change the product? No, no changing. Um, maybe for one of them, for the, the line, but for the vertical one, we can do two and then we plug in the Y for negative five. Okay. So two times negative five. Yeah, negative five minus... minus a times 1 plus b equals 0. Boom. There's your first relationship. And then for the horizontal one, it will be ax minus b equals 0. So a times 5 minus b equals 0. And there's my second equation. Now, there is no more calculus involved in this problem. And really, the only calculus involved is, is that vertical tangent. That means the denominator equals zero. That, that translation of vocabulary is really the calculus part, which isn't really calculus. It's just, you know, in terms of it's not really math, right? It's, it's just a known relationship. When I say vertical tangent, it means the denominator of the derivative is zero. So I take the denom denominator of the derivative and I set it into zero while plugging in that point. And now I just clean these up. So I got to clean these up here. Um, so that gives me what negative 10 minus a plus b equals zero. The other one gives me 5a minus b equals 0. Um, and how are we going to solve this problem? It's up to you. Now, it's algebra. It actually has nothing to do with me and my teachings. It has to do with you and your previous teacher's teachings and how and what strategies you use to solve this type of system of equation, which is the most basic of type of system of equation problems that you can get. How do we want to solve this? Your choice. You tell me. Can't do graphing. So if you were one of my algebra students, if I was teaching you advanced algebra, if I was teaching you math too, and we were talking about system of equations and how we, we choose, typically the answer is if you can solve for one of the variables cleanly, no fractions, if you can solve for one of the variables, then you should probably use the substitution method. I did it for the... Horizontal one, we said 5a minus b equals 0. So, so hold on, hold on. So, so, 
you can do that. And if I were going to do that, I would do just what Ariana said. I would take the 5a minus b equal to 0, and I would solve for b because that is the easiest and cleanest one I can solve for. Does everybody understand that? Why I would solve. If I had the, my decision and I was attacking this problem, I would solve for 5a. I would solve for b for the equation 5a minus b equals 0. And then I would substitute that into the other equation. Does everybody get that? Anybody not get that? Better question. So with that said, let's use the elimination method. <laughs> Since you didn't tell me what to do. I'm going to use the elimination method because you should be able to be comfortable seeing both of them. The elimination method typically means that you have the variables on one side and then the constants on the other. doesn't necessarily have to be that way, but... We can actually we can even do it in this form, but that's not really comfortable. This is negative a plus b equals ten, and then we have the other equation, which was five a minus b equals zero, and we can use the elimination method because it's already actually built for the elimination method. You have a positive b on one and a negative b on the other. It's beautiful for the elimination method. I add down. What do I get when I add down? Well, it would be 4a equals 10. Good. Divide by 4, divide by 4. So, so a equals? Five over two. Five over two. And then I'm going to take an equation that I know, a relationship between a and b that I know. 5a minus b equals 0. And I plug in. what I just found, that gives me 25 over 2 minus b equals 0. So b equals 25 over 2. 25 over 2. We could have just done the same thing. And like I said, we could have just solved for b and then plugged b into the, the, the blue b. We could have solved for blue b and then once we found that 5a, we could have plugged in 5a for the b inside the purple relation, purple b, and then solved for a, and you would still get 5 halves. All the work, it's, it's really the same. This was a problem that really just, you can do elimination or substitution in the end, it's going to be the same amount of work. Um, how did you substitution eliminate? But typically, when the, the most typical way for a student that maybe not feel as comfortable with system of equations is that they're always going to try to force feed substitution and that's fine if you do substitution for all of these you always solve for one and then you plug into the other it's going to work and on the AP exam the focus here is not to solve some complicated crazy ridiculous system of equation problems so as such typically you can solve for one of the letters rather cleanly in this case you could have even solved for A in the purple and then plugged it into the blue you could have done that one because it was just both of them have just singular A's or singular B's. You have four tries, right? There's two letters in the one equation and two letters in the other equation. Most likely one of them is going to be solo with that A or B or, or, or whatever the variable that is you're trying to solve for. And then you solve for it and plug it into the other equation, find one of the values and replug it back into what you substituted. The process is the same. It's about muscle memory. It's about doing it over and as over and as much as you can. And with that, that's what I have for you. Your homework is posted. It is 8.59. Still six minutes left, but that's all I have for you. You have a great weekend, everybody. I will see you on Monday.